the animals that got off the ark, well, we see a lot of variety today. And yet, if you were to look in your biology textbook, well, it would say that that variety evolved over millions upon millions of years. And that's the common thought process of so many people today. Uh, why do you think that is? It's just so ingrained. And in fact, the few times I've given lectures in Boston, one of the churches there has asked me to come and they say, can you please minimize talking about 6,000 years? It's wow. a dirty word up here in the Northeast. You'll turn people off. If we can just get them to question evolution, get them in church, sit under biblical teaching, they'll become young earth creationists. But you say 6,000 years, end of discussion, they walk out the door. Is that right? And again, I think it's this whole idea that if you say 6,000 years, which is actually what happens if you were to add up all of the chronologies mentioned in the Bible, well, then people say, ah, ah, ah. No, I learned in my science class that the earth is about 4.5 billion years old. I learned that the universe is 14 billion years old. How in the world can it only be 6,000 years old? and still maintain a scientific approach. In fact, we asked people on the street this very question. We said, how old do you think the Earth is? Let's look at their response. Pangea is um, about four or five gazillion years old. Two, three million years. Approximately four-ish point something billion. I should know that. Billions? 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 Oh, geez, I have no idea. 30 billion years. Uh, I heard like 10 million or something. Okay. Nah, not 10 million. Let's go with uh, 100 million. Oh gosh. Uh, I've heard the faith-based theory anywhere from 6,000 to 38,000 years, and the scientific idea is, you know, three to four billion. So you can go with either answer depending on what you what you what you believe, what you feel. So I think it's a little under 6,000 years old. <laughs> Definitely not 2,000 years old. <laughs> it's millions and millions of years old. <laughs> Four billion years old or three billion, it's very, very old. It's definitely not 4,000 years old. <laughs> 4,500 years. I, I would say I 20 million. You know, those, those answers were kind of all over. Pretty uh, scattershot. They're pretty scattered. <laughs> There was one who got the secular theory correct. He said uh, four point something billion years old. And then there was one who actually, I, I, I love this designation because he said, well, if you go with the faith-based theory, well, then thousands of years old. If you go with science, well, then millions and billions, right? But how do the scientists come up with millions and billions of years for the age of the earth? I think part of the challenge in this question is there's so much math involved, mm -hmm. people just go with what authorities tell them. Okay. But what I'd like to do is, is sort of pull away the veneer of this mm -hmm. and, and look at what exactly is going on. Because you can boil it down to some pretty basic principles that undergird the entire edifice. And if you understand that and understand some of the more recent discoveries, the whole edifice comes crashing down. Okay. So and even, it, even though it's cultural pariah. You're a weirdo if you believe 6,000 years. No, it's, it's, it's really strong, strongly supported scientifically. You are actually, and, and we saw that even within some of the responses. It's certainly not only thousands of years. It has to be millions or billions of years. But again, I, I think the point that we might drive home is that secular theories on the age of the earth are also faith-based theories for the most part. They're based on assumptions that many times are untestable. And the issue matters because... If you put millions of years into the text of Scripture, yeah. you're putting death and suffering, you're putting bloodshed and disease, uh. you're putting all sorts of bad things long before mankind's sin, and now you have to ask the question, what does the whole rest of Scripture mean? In this discussion of millions of years, all you need to know is that they're looking for a clock. What's a clock? It's a timekeeper, and the way you keep time is something changes. I mean, we might look at our watches and we watch the second hand move or something progresses, okay. and that's how we measure time. That's the principle then that's applied into a variety of fields of science. We typically think, at least I think of it in the modern era, one of the main questions I get as a creationist, well, how do you explain light from distant stars? Mm -hmm. It's usually some sort of astronomical or geologic question because that's, that's what's dominated the discussion for 200 years. What I learned recently though is in the astronomical realm, for most of history, mm -hmm. recent history at least, 
millions of years was not part of the equation. People looked at the universe, it's just so vast, it must have gone on for eternity. Mm -hmm. So how can you talk about time if the universe is timeless? It was only recently with the, with the discovery of the universe's expansion that people began to assign timestamps to this and say, no, there's, there's, there's clock-like behavior in the universe. Something is changing and we can measure how long it's happened. So often they talk about the expansion of the universe. Mm -hmm. It's getting bigger. And I like to think of uh, an analogy to understand this. So if I was significantly larger than I am right now, and you had walked into the room and there was a plate of brownies sitting here on the table mm -hmm. and uh, chocolate smeared in my cheek and crumbs down my shirt, you would... Uh, immediately have a hypothesis as to why I was larger than perhaps you knew me a couple years earlier or whenever it was. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know when I was smaller. I obviously was smaller at some point. You could try to calculate when I was smaller, 50 pounds lighter, by saying how fast are you consuming those brownies? Uh, how much chocolate is on your cheek? How long has it been there? Yep. What's been changing about you to, to expand your waistline? <laughs> That's the idea they're applying to the universe. Okay. How, how big is the universe currently? How big is my girth currently? <laughs> how fast is it getting bigger? And so then you just go backwards and say, when did it start expanding? Okay. So they say, that we know the universe is gigantic. We can measure the rate at which it's expanding. And it gives you billions of years. It's, it's really just one math equation. The difference, the distance, is a function of the rate multiplied by the time. So if you know how big it is, how fast it's expanding, you can calculate how long ago, the time element of this equation. So very quickly, uh, there was a, an astronomer um, by the name of Esto Slipher who observed that the universe seemed to be expanding. He didn't really realize the implications. Another man came along, a Belgian Jesuit priest by the name of Georges Lemaitre, and he said, yeah, we could look at this as basically the universe being stretched out, and oh, light bulb, which means that if we just linearly put it all back together again, we can figure out when the universe was a single speck, or as he called it, a cosmic egg. Makes sense if you're just on a broad sense, but there are assumptions involved. Exactly. 